Hi everyone, this is Gia Will <coughs> from Life Man Production Squared, and we are back to continue our rest tier Let's Play walkthrough. So last time we were doing uh, survival mode, and we got through the Let first. I think we got through the first um, first payment. Um, where is it? Ah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, yes, the day before. Um, so the next payment is eighty thousand picks. Um, so it's just, for a while it's going to be a slog to get through the payments until we get to a point where it's actually starting to press us a bit. Um, since we got all, <laughs> all this picks just sitting around collecting dust, um, from the save file that we loaded into this. Um, so let's go ahead and head to, um... So we'll go out and uh, check out uh, one of the dungeons here, see if we can't find... Um... So I think he has a... He has a crystal sword, right? That's right. I sold him a crystal sword and he equipped it like a moron. Um, Alright, Louie. Oh, wait. Um, not that. The holy armor is what we want. What happened to the uh, shield? I, I think, did I lose it? I might have lost it. And of course, some healing stuff. <coughs> Um, let's see, we don't have a lot of that. We'll heal a bunch that we don't really necessarily need. Um, I think part with a few ham sandwiches. Um, Toyaki for the SP. Um, maybe a couple baked DMs too. Alright. And we got 40 spaces or 35. <clears throat> Alright. And, um, where are we? Oh, interesting. Crystal Nightmare is not available in, uh, in this. That is interesting. It's the only connect, so it's only accessible from Endless Mode, which is fine, I guess, because I don't want to, <laughs> don't want to deal with that place. Um, so I guess we got the Lapis Ruins, uh, Uh, let's go ahead and try one of the upper floors. Um, 81 to 85. So, on a. <laughs> yay! Auto mapper doesn't work. Very first map. Awesome. That was, uh. Sarcastic awesome. Sarcastic awesome, man. So I found this game on um, Steam earlier in the month um, called Gem Crafter Shadow Something. It's a pretty interesting game, actually. It's a tower defense game. Why didn't that guy get frozen for? Because he hadn't appeared yet. Oh, crud. The worst time for those guys to show up is when you run into enemies that force you into a particular position because then they can fry you with that flame wall of flame thing. Anyway, so, um. I thought there was more. It's, it's kind of interesting. So you, you, um. So you um, start out on the map, and you're given uh, uh, mana. So mana is the currency you use to spend to do things. Um, and you have various types of gems you can use um, that have different effects, like uh, gems that will cause poison damage over time, gems that will um, reduce health regeneration of monsters. Um, 
gems that will slow them down, uh, others that will do, like, critical damage or increase the chance of critical damage. Um, stuff like that. There's also some that'll get stronger the more uh, kills they get, um, others that will increase in power as your mana pool levels up. I'm just listing a whole bunch of stuff, and I haven't actually found all the gem types yet. There's nine of them? No. Like, twelve of them. Total. Um, and you get, uh, each, um, field is consisted, well, each, the, the game space is consistent of a map that has, like, hexagonal map that you, uh, you reveal over time as you complete different fields. Um, uh, each field has, like, um, like a different layout and things like that, obviously. And different um, types of um, enemy waves that you'll have to complete uh, to um, win. Uh, not complete, but uh, survive. And the goal is to um, not allow the enemies to um, get to your uh, orb of... I forget what it's called, but it's uh, basically an orb located somewhere on the map that's like the end point of the, uh, the path that the monsters will take to... Uh, once they get onto the, the field. And um, the way it works is if a monster hits that, uh, they remove a certain amount of mana. They have a certain mana cost associated with them, and when they hit that uh, orb, they will reduce your mana by that amount, if it if you have that amount of mana. If you don't, the orb gets destroyed and you lose the battle. You have to restart. Um, you can also uh, do different things with the gems uh, to kind of deal with that, such as um, strengthening your gems uh, or your orbs. So you can like drop gems onto the orb to um, reduce the amount of mana that gets removed if a monster ends up uh, hitting it. And so you have. Um, uh, these towers that you sometimes they will be put up automatically other times you'll have to actually build them um, because there won't be any there and uh, you put gems in these towers and within a certain radius um, based on the gem level they will uh, attack enemies that go near them um, uh, each enemy wave gets stronger so <clears throat> once you get towards the end of the the battle on that field Enemies that were killed by, like, say, uh, level 1 or 2 gem won't really take any damage at all, to be honest. So you have to, like, level up your gems as you go through. Um, and uh, there's also different types of enemies that have different, like, um, features. Uh, like, uh, for example, um, they have... Um, the main type of enemy are called Reavers, and they're just basically, like, a just general kind of foot soldier sort of unit. Um, they look like monsters, they're not like people. Um, look like sort of alienish creatures or something. Um, I haven't really read a lot of the backstory that they give to you as you win different fields, so I actually give it to you in like um, pieces of like uh, chapters of a book or something like that. I haven't really read too much of that aside from the first bit. Um, so they're like they're like monsters or demons or something that are spawned by this creature called the. Crap, I've forgotten already. Hey, there's the thing. I'm just going to take it because this is an annoying field. Defense power doubled for everyone. Okay. Anyway, so they, they get they're, they were created by this, this entity that you are dealing with that had um, actually possessed you at one point, and uh, you freed yourself from the possession using something called a scythe gate. Um, which kind of removed the con the, that entity's consciousness from you. And, um, I guess your basic goal is to go through and try and figure out a way to stop the entity. I don't really know what the story is. It's not very, a very coherent and comprehensive story. It's just like a something that just kind of pieces together the gameplay a little bit in terms of, like, what you're actually doing. But there's no real overarching, detailed, deep story to it, as far as I can tell so far. Um... But you have these uh, monsters called Reavers that are just basic monsters. Um, nothing really that special about them. You also have um, 
enemy enemies that are called marked enemies, which are essentially the same kind of type of enemy as the normal ones, but they move faster. Um, so far, I've seen three different types of enemies: reavers, swarmlings, and giants. Um, giants are like the boss enemies of the game uh, when they they have like a lot of health and usually a lot of armor, um, unless you fight them uh, very early on. Even then, they might have a lot of armor, which makes them really hard to, to kill without having any kind of the uh, anti-armor gemstones available. Um, Swarmlings are like, um, they're kind of like, you know, they're like a throwaway, you know, like Zerglings. Um, usually there's a lot of them that spawn on the waves, and they, um, uh, are pretty easy to kill. Um, there are some other types of enemies that I've found so far. Um, there's like, uh, different types of enemy buildings, um, monster nests, which will spawn monster, extra monsters every, uh, wave. Which can be beneficial sometimes, um, like for example, if you uh, are on what they call a tomb uh, field, a field with a tomb on it, and uh, tombs are just buildings that contain different uh, spells you can learn, uh, spells and skills you can learn. Um, but they have certain requirements you have to fulfill to unlock them, um, such as defeating a certain number of, uh, uh, of monsters within a certain range of the, the tomb to unlock it. Or... Um, like, uh, freezing them in place and killing them while they're frozen, uh, kind of thing. Kind of like that. It's like a requirements kind of thing you have to fulfill to unlock it. And there's different kinds of things that they require you to do. But in some maps that are like that, two maps, you have to keep the monster nests, um, alive because, um, not enough monsters spawn normally, ouch, uh, to actually fulfill the, the quest. So sometimes you have to keep them around. And they're actually also kind of annoying to get rid of because you have to drop uh, gems on them. So what you can do with gems is you can make them and drop them as bombs. Uh, it sacrifices the gem, but crap, we're out of SP. Oh my god. This is ridiculous. Just pause for a second while I deal with this madness. Okay, there we go. Um, so you, you create the gems uh, using mana. Uh, goldfish will. Uh, you drop them onto a like a grid on the uh, left side, right side of the screen, and uh, each grid line represents a new level of gem crystal sword that you can uh, create. But it costs an increasing amount of mana to do so. Um, and the level of the gem that you have um, will correspond to how much damage it will do when you drop it as a bomb. And uh, when you drop it, it does a certain amount of damage, and then uh, kind of sprites spawn off from it and do uh, additional damage over time um, individually. Like three or four sprites will spawn, and they'll just like attack things around them for a while before they uh, dissipate. Um, but so you can destroy monster nests that way, or by having towers attack them. Um, there are also other types of buildings that'll spawn around, um, like. Uh, just kind of uh, neutral buildings that you can destroy by dropping a certain level of gem bomb on top of. There's also um, other things that can be unlocked by using a, a skill called Bolt. And you have to hit them with a bolt from a tower a certain number of times to unlock them. They use that for like um, destructible things like uh, barrels and uh, loot crates that will contain usually contain mana and uh, shadow cores, which are a type of upgrade resource. And sometimes they even contain gems. But not very often. Oh, sandwich. So it's, it's like it, most other tower defense games, there's a path that enemies will, will go down. Um, unlike most of them though, you can actually set up walls that will kind of um, change how they will, enemies will, um, uh, you know, travel around the map. Most of the time you actually can't really use them very effectively because you can't block 
um, and then the enemy's path to the gems. Um, and you also can't uh, place them in such a way that a monster nest couldn't spawn enemies that would have a path to the gem. Um, so typically what you're doing with them is you're just blocking off certain paths to make the travel time, well, longer for the monster so that you can do more damage to them. Oh my god. <laughs> that was kind of crazy. Um, there are some fields that I've found that are just like total... They, they have lots of open space and you can actually go through and create all kinds of stuff with them. There's one that I found that was literally just about basically how well of a... How um, complex of a maze you can create out of walls to prevent enemies from getting to the gem very fast. Um, that's a pretty interesting uh, map to play on. Uh, but for the most part, walls are kind of semi-useless. Um, but you have different skills that you can learn through these tombs, and, um, uh, they have different types of features on them, like, for example, Bolt basically, uh, increases the... It's like a, kind of a single burst damage kind of thing. It, you do so much damage for so amount of time from the tower. And, um, over time you'll have, uh, the, the effects will wear off over time as you take more, as the tower takes more shots with the Bolt skill. Um, in a lot of cases, the Bolt skill is the only way to kill giants. Um, especially when you're doing the endurance mode after you've won. Um, endurance mode is basically just a, like, a survival sort of thing on the map that you can do after you've beaten the map. Um, well, after you've played through and beaten it on that particular run. Um, you can then do the endurance mode to continue to gather more experience and, uh, shadow cores and things like that. Uh, by just basically finding endless ways of enemies. And during endurance mode you'll also have certain things that'll, uh, events that'll happen like, um, shrines might show up that are, uh, already present in the map, or you might have, um find events that will increase the amount of experience you get per kill. Um, I might do a uh, live stream of it later, of the game later, just to kind of show it. It's a lot easier to do it that way than to um, <laughs> explain it on some other game. Um, obviously, it'll probably already have happened by the time this is uploaded, if it is uploaded, if I do do that, so. Um, kind of moot point to mention here, but it's a really interesting game. Um, if you're into tower defense kind of games, um, you'll probably like it. It, it also seems to be the second in a series of, of Gem Crafter games. Oh, and I forgot to mention why it's called Gem Crafter. Um, you can also take gems and drop them and combine them on each other. Um, to enhance, you know, essentially add one gem's abilities to an, to another type of gem. So, like, you can have a gem that has poison damage and uh, uh, does uh, armor-piercing damage, for example. Holy crap. Enemy movement speed doubled. I haven't seen that one for a while. That's going to be kind of annoying. Toadstool got killed by a fish. Only in Rissa here. Cross a little too soon. Where'd that other one go? Oh, way back over here. Jeez. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Back by that firewall. <clears throat> I got a level up, good. I didn't even notice. That's not really a level up anymore, it's uh, like a full heal, essentially. I wish the levels went over 100. Kind of really necessary, to be honest, for Crystal Nightmare. What is that? Arc Saber. Awesome. Holy crap. It took forever to find that thing. I've been looking for that thing for literally hours and hours of gameplay, and I finally found the damn thing. And it's, you know, just one step above the demon sword or whatever I have equipped right now. I think. Maybe not one step, it's a few steps ahead, but it's not like the best weapon. Oh, wow. That was an awesome uh, throw of that bomb. I should take out a couple of enemies. Golden pedestal. So we got a few more areas to search crap out of here. And uh, we'll head up to the next floor. Can I equip? I can. Awesome. Or no, well. Yeah, I can. Cool. Um. So yeah, it does. <clears throat> Wait. How come we didn't equip the demon sword? See, so yeah, it's 30 more damage than the demon demon bane. But I had him. I don't know why. I had him. That's just weird. Well, three more attack power doesn't necessarily mean the damage. Not sure how that equates out to damage. But it's basically the weapon that you would need to probably be able to properly deal with um, this, you know, these areas that we're in right now um, quickly. It might help you survive a little bit longer in Crystal Nightmare, but I don't think it would help drastically. You'd need something even higher up than this. Actually, I think the Arc Saber is in a component to another to a fusion. I'm not sure if I have the rest of the parts for it, though. I'll have to check them and get back. Half as effective. Master, master, to, master, master, catorial deficiency event is what I call that. I think that's why I called that before. <clears throat> That's a falcon puncher. Yeah. 
And another teleport. <coughs> Come on, fall down. Hey, watermelon. Oh, well. Almost didn't notice that guy. Now we gotta eat some things because we're out of space. There's a teleport. <clears throat> Won't take it just yet. Interesting. Oh crap. Oh good. I was knocked down so I didn't get damaged. But they did. Alright, what's over this way? Ah, oh, great. More of these dudes. These annoying guys. Now I need to <clears throat> open this thing up, so... See what's in there. Another one of those giant's fists. Nah. Didn't attack fast enough. Probably a rock trap back there, so I'm not gonna bother. <laughs> That's an awesome, awesome shot. <clears throat> right in their faces. Eat that bomb. Friggin' kobolds. Alright, um, oh, we have found the thing already. Let's see what's down that last area there. Now we'll take the chicken. 